Now, uh, the message I have uh, for you here to address the subject, has the Christian faith failed you? And so what I'm going to try and do is take three broad areas in which people think. But the very first broad area in which people fear or think that the Christian faith may fail or indeed has failed is philosophical. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, if it's not possible to please God without faith, you better know what faith is. And very handily, the next part of Hebrews 11 says, and faith is knowing that God is, and he is a rewarder of those who earnestly or diligently seek him. Faith is the only appropriate response to a God who is real and who has revealed himself and made himself known. There are so many prophecies about the coming of Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, that it will be impossible for one person to randomly fulfill them. But some of these prophecies concern where he will be born and who his parents will be. That is something very hard to control on the other side of the womb. Now, this flows really into the second broad category of why we sometimes feel the Christian faith has failed or may fail us, and it's existential. It's to do with our feelings and our expectations what we want. And at one point he says... How can you tell if someone who says, I'm a Christian, is a Christian? And he says, the way you can tell is you can tell by the fruit in their life. Now, he doesn't say fruits in the plural, fruit in the singular. And he says, and when you taste this fruit, it should taste of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. He said, that's what you should taste. So Paul says, look, taste it. And if you have tasted something different in other Christians' lives, I'm sorry about that. Don't let the presence of the fake put you off the real. We are not good people. We all fail, all of us. That's the truth. So Paul says, look, there are two Gospels, but there's only one true Gospel. There's one, and then there's another one which is totally different. He says that the false Gospel goes like this. If I obey the law, and if I try hard, you, God, will reward me and love me. And Paul says, cursed is the person who preaches this gospel, and cursed is the one who believes it. Paul said there is only one true gospel, and it always brings a blessing. It is a gospel that says this, God, I'm sorry that I have done wrong. I'm sorry that I have failed you. Thank you, you sent Jesus to forgive me. Please, Lord, forgive me through your son, through his death and resurrection. Forgive me. Make me whole. And Jesus says, Paul says, that gospel, it brings a blessing. Blessed is the one who preaches it, and blessed is the one who receives it. Do you know that love in your life? Approval is something which we earn by acting in a certain way. But love is something that we may receive even when we don't deserve it. And God loves us. It's because it's the nature of love to delight yourself in the other. That's the nature of a loving relationship. And that's the relationship God longs to have with us. It will motivate you to a great life in him. And your life will look different and you will act differently, not because you have to, but because you want to. That is the power of love. Now, the last way in which people think the Christian faith has failed is moral. And the argument goes something like this. You Christians, you talk about love a lot. You say your God is a God of love. But there's all this judgment in the Bible. And you're always talking about judgment. So which one is it? Is he this loving God who accepts everybody? Or is he this judging God who looks at people and says, no, you're wrong? Which one is it? Now, the thing is, is you'll read about God's love and judgment in both parts of the Bible. So God's character hasn't changed. Because true love doesn't exist in the absence of judgment. True love exists in the presence of it. When someone who knows you completely and sees how you've messed up in every way in your life and yet still says, I love you, that is the most meaningful declaration you have. And yet this is precisely the way in which God loves us. God sees the real you. And not only that, I have come into this world to rescue you. I have paid the price for what you have done. So you can be forgiven. So you can be set free. So that you can be different. So you don't need to feel the shame. You don't need to feel the cause. I can set you free from it. That's why Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I am the truth, Jesus Christ said. I see everything. And I have paid for everything. Do you know that peace with him? Do you know you can stand in front of him, look him in the eye, and talk to him? Thank you for listening to me. You've been so gracious and so kind. It's been a blessing for me to be here with you.